All right, looks like I'm live. Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. Hope everybody's having a great week so far, and uh, we're that much closer to the weekend. Uh, I want to thank everybody for popping in. Hope uh, hope everyone is well. So let's see. we got a few people already here in the chat. Let me say hello to a few people here. First one in, we got James Severn. How's it going, man? Hank Hill is here. There's my buddy Bruce. How are you? Joe Hervey in the house. Terry Himes is here. Jack Clark, how are you? Jack the Rabbit, get two Jacks in here now. Uh, and BB Mate is here. All right, guys. So uh, for uh, for tonight, I got a guest that uh, you probably all know. He's been in a lot of the chats uh, recently, and um, he's got a really good YouTube channel himself. Of course, another guitar player. He's, he went to NAMM, has been lately posting a, a lot of cool uh, NAMM vids. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on my guest, Six String Stanger. Hey, Dave, how are you, man? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Good, nice good, to, man. Nice to finally meet you. <laughs> well, it's, it's, or as close as possible at this point, right. right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, and of course, a whole bunch of people just... I just said hello to a few, and, and now now more people rushed in. So let me just say hello real quick. So Tom Harhai is here, Tim Seymour, Gurr is here, awesome Merrill J. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, folks, if you have any questions, uh, please just tag me. And uh, oh, there's Hippie man. How are you, Hippie? I uh, just up, tag man? me, and I'll uh, I'll convey those to uh, Dave here. Oh, there's Blimpus. Hey, Blimpus, man, I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing well, man. Paul Lou is here. Cool. There's Brian S., Dwight Bailey, Wannabe Guitar God, Edwin Crane. Wow. Everybody's coming in. Thanks yeah, a lot. Folks. Really appreciate it. Janice is here. Sweet. Awesome. Nice. 23 people already. Awesome. All right. So as per usual, Dave, I usually start off asking what got you started in, in uh, playing guitar Usually, it usually comes down to like a band or, or maybe a relative or something or so, something inspired you to play. So in your case, what was and how old were you when you first picked it up and started getting interested in playing? Oh, man. Okay. As far as I know, we're probably about the same age. I'm I'm about, uh, I'll be 47 this year, actually. Okay, I'm a uh, lot older than you. Oh, really? <laughs> how old are you? I'm, old are you? I'm 53 now. Oh, well, okay. I got six okay. years on it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Sorry. That's good. Hey, at least <laughs> when I talk '80s to you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I was, I, I was, I was a teenager. <laughs> yes, I love the '80s. There's nothing like it. Um, right. But yeah, that's a. The '80s was a big influence in my life. You know, I mean, gosh, yeah, every band was just kick ass, awesome. You know, Doc and Rat, you name it. Uh, yeah, Molly Crew. Back, Mo, oh yeah, Molly Crew, Die Hard, Crew had every all the time. Um, yeah, you got Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, come yeah. on, back when when Zach Wilde joined, and uh, you know, No Rest for the Wicked came out, game changer. That that was one of the biggest things that changed me. And mm -hmm. I was like, hey, I got to start playing. I got to start playing guitar or something because that was just that was an eye opener. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, my my very first guitar was actually a, an acoustic that my dad had. I think it was a was a Harmony. I think it was a Harmony. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> It was a horrible guitar. I mean, the strings were like that far off the neck, you know. And yeah. I just felt great playing one string, you know. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> First song I ever, I never took lessons, you know. I just picked things out by ear and stuff like that. Right, um, right. So, basically, my first song I ever learned to play was, you know, Iron Man. Come on, you know, Black Sabbath. Yeah, well, that's one string you can play that Iron right, Man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I thought I was such a badass. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it just kind of took off from there. And then I got uh, one of my buddies, I traded some video games for this state of the art electric guitar. It was, it was all right, it had it was like a Fender style body or whatever. And right, what was the make bad. of it? Uh, it was that's was what it was called, state of the art. I don't state know, state of the art, yeah. Oh, okay, I don't know, if, I don't know what that is. If it's I don't, good, know. bad, <laughs> no, no idea. I, I... Right. Never heard of um, it. Yeah, so it's just, then I really got into, that, those years, that's probably around 9 to 12 years old when that was going on from the mm -hmm. acoustic to, to the electric. And then, uh, oh, let's see. It's probably around the 15-year-old, 16-year-old mark. I uh, 
really started wanting to <clears throat> actually like play play a little bit more you know as far as i would actually take the drum beats from songs mm -hmm. and record record them on like a little recorder just you know you remember how you had the little recorder you push re play and record and yeah yeah the microphone i'd do that just just re record over and over a drum beat so i'd have something to play along with right <clears> right so i did that for years and after I got married and stuff, uh, then I started writing my own songs and lyrics and getting better equipment, got my own four track, things like that. And I've, I've written probably about 40 to 45 songs now, but, mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping, I mean, I got all the stuff to do it. It's just trying to figure it all out. You know, like the studio one, all that stuff. I, I can do things, but I got easy drummer too. Mm -hmm. Pain in the ass. <laughs> Not so easy, eh? <laughs> no, not easy at all. But uh, but yeah, it's just and I've I've had other things. You ever heard of? Uh, I think it was made by Digitech uh, GNX4. It's, it was called a guitar workstation, and it okay. had it had an eight track recorder in it and uh, tons of different drum beats, all kinds of stuff. You could take your guitar and actually set it for uh, a bass guitar. All kinds of things. Oh, cool! Yeah, when I got that, and that's that's when my songwriting took took off a lot. After that, so pretty right. inspiring. Right. But, um, yeah, I just I, I never I'm not a great singer by any means, <laughs> but but I do what I can do. I got all my songs up on my playlist too. It's just <clears throat> they're in my playlist. They're uh, by albums, I guess you could call it. All right. Well, this is a this is a good time to mention it. If uh, if anyone's not sub to a six string stanger, I have I have his channel in the cards. Uh, link to his channel in the cards, and I also have a link below if uh, if you are so inclined. And and I just wanted to say hello to more people that uh, yeah, popped in since we got going here. Right. Uh, okay, Hugh Caldwell is here. Hey man, good to see you. The new guitarist, welcome. Six string Brian is here. Hey Brian. So I got a funny story about Six String Brian. So I'm up at a music store here in, in Toronto, and I went to drop off a couple of guitars to put some pickups in it. And mm -hmm. and I'm walking to the, you know, to the tech area, and I'm hearing like this like really raunchy like screaming guitar, right? And I'm mm -hmm. and I walk past like they had a, a room like a closed in room where guys could try stuff out. And I look in the window, and who do I see but Brian sitting there playing on this ball? <laughs> like, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> Talk about coincidence. That was pretty funny. And then we hung out for a bit. So that was, that was kind of cool. So, hey, Brian. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I watched I in on his, one of his streams there uh, a couple days ago or so. I've watched a few things of Six String Brian. He's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. He goes on uh, he goes on Mondays at 7, yeah. Yeah. Um, Dale Palmer. Paul Lou is here. Wendy Wilson. There's a new name. That, Welcome. You know, you know who that is? No, I don't. That's my sister. <laughs> oh, hey Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Yeah. Welcome That's cool. aboard. That's cool. Uh Edwin Crane, Music Therapy Laz. Uh he was on just before I was, so sorry, Mr. Laz, but I had to get this thing going. Uh Greg Meyer is here. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anyone. Bobby Lopez, Jimmy Biter, welcome guys. Lost Smoke. Hey there, Guitar Hack and Hack, did you work? through your pedal rig again. Yeah, I, uh, I I talked about this the other day. On Friday, I had a gig on my pedal board, went to shit, like five sec five minutes before we started, and I ended up ripping it apart. Got to go on. Yeah, so I did it. I Here's what kills me. I, I ripped the whole thing apart here. I did a video of it, like, you know, guitar or whatever. I forget what I call it, nightmare or whatever. And I started putting everything back together. And, of course, everything works beautifully now, right? So I didn't find the gremlin, but there's a gremlin in there somewhere. So. <laughs> oh, Boldini is here. There's a new name. Welcome. Hey, believe this or not, that that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the He's channel. The that, honestly, all props to him. He's the one that got my YouTube channel started. He's the one that inspired me to do it. Because when I wrote my first couple of CDs or songs that I'd done, Right. He he said, "Hey, you know, why don't you get your name out there? Put it put it on the, you know, YouTube or whatever." I was like, "Okay." So, that's kind of where this saying came from. It's all about the music cuz you know, naturally duh, that's everything about my channel, right? Everything is about the music. Right, right. So, 
Right. But yeah, well, that's, that's cool, man. Props to him. So that's cool. Yeah, we'll get into that in your channel and how all that kind of came about. Um, Stephen S, welcome. Metal Soda is here. Thrash is here. David Ennis. Hey, Johnny Bean. How are you, man? Uh, okay. JP Page 2. Wow. Layla's Guitar Daddy. I think I saw your name. It's just jumped on me. Okay. I think I'm caught up. So if anyone's got any questions from, uh, I don't know if you're in the chat, uh, Dave, but if not, just tag yeah, me. Yeah, I got him. Okay, BC Rich 581 half face. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, just uh, just tag me. So, um, all right. So, so who was there like any any sort of guitar player that you're like? You mentioned Zach Wild. Is like, is that your guy? Is that the guy that kind of like really? I would. I would say it's my main. That's my main guy right there. Yeah, I mean, there's others, but he was probably my most inspirational one that made me want to pick up guitar right he he's just he's so unique he's just got that bluesy southern rock right tone but he can just tear it up you know what i'm saying yeah yeah <laughs> and what's he what's he call it meat and potatoes just uh, that's what i that's what that's it's awesome <laughs> yeah 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 he's uh yeah he's a he's a well i mean ozzy's always had phenomenal players right yes yes you he know, has starting with randy i know there's a lot of folks that randy's like their guy you know right. jakey lee you know oh yeah and nothing no i'm not taking nothing away from them guys either trust yeah me. no 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 i'm not just saying like he's always had yeah. really you know he had gus g for a while yes you know yes. He's, he's had some really good players hey dave's guitar channel's in here nice shirt thank you dave <laughs> yeah yeah cool cool so um all right so i guess i guess we're, we're all cut so have you, you see, we're saying that you're writing original. Oh, there's Spencer Cron. How are you? You were saying you're writing original music. So, um, did you ever like play or get into a band with some folks? And, uh, are you always been a sort of solo guy? Pretty much a solo guy. I mean, I've gotten together with friends and just kind of jammed out or whatever a couple of times, but right. as far as, like playing out and actually having a band per se. No, never done that. Mm hmm. Just always been pretty much the one man band guy, you know. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So, so talk to me about the the. Oh, there's Quentin James. <laughs> so talk to me uh, about the uh, about the channel. So you're saying your son uh, got you got you going on the YouTube, right? Uh, like I said, it was just basically the music part of it. It's how it all started, right? <clears throat> and then uh, just kind of progressed over the years. Started doing demos of you know pedals and um gee i'm trying to think back now but a lot of my stuff is mostly mostly uh just demo geared and then there's a few few things i did with the songs like i tried to back before i got technical i would do like i have a song playing and then i would put like different pictures with it you know trying to do a video type thing right right um uh, but uh i'll tell you what really one of the key elements to my channel where I kind of not really blew up because I'm not really huge. I actually hit 1900, I think right before we started this, which that was awesome. Thank you. If you guys subscribed, if you're in the chat, um, anyway, the, the one thing that really hit my channel, I was, I was probably around eight or 900 subs and I started doing DIY guitar kits. And oh, that, okay. Yeah. That people love that. They and, dug uh, that, eh? Yeah. So I've done uh, six or seven different DIYs now, and I, I kind of stopped doing them because of weather, you know what I mean? So you want to try to do them in the spring and in the summer or whatever, because it's not so fun to do in the wintertime, especially if you ain't got a heated garage or a place to actually do that stuff. Right. Uh, somebody was saying that your mic is a touch low. Uh, touch low? Dave, yeah, if you could turn up just a little bit. Thanks, Bobby, yeah. for letting me know. Is that any better? <clears throat> okay, so I'm clipping and you're too low. So let me turn myself down. <laughs> okay. Can't, we so, can't win. Okay, so I turn myself down and all right. All right, yeah, folks, let us let us know. I'm kind of, we're kind of flying blind here, kind of count on you to let yeah. us know about uh, levels and such. 
because we yeah, flying blind. This is the first time I'm using StreamYard, so <laughs> <laughs> was a little bit of an adventure. hit the nail on the head on that one. Yeah, it's a little bit of an adventure before we started, but we got to figure it out. Russ is here. Hey, Russ, how are you, man? <clears throat> so the DIY stuff. So are you so are you buying like uh, like complete kits, and you're just is it a matter of just putting it together and then painting it up and that? Right. That yep. The extent of it. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can actually pull a couple off the wall and show you if you want. Yeah, yeah, man, please do. I mean, some of the guys in chat's probably seen it, but give me one second. Here. Yeah, no worries. It's better, uh, Bobby. Audio's better. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, folks, I appreciate the comments. Then I can try to correct thing on correct things on the fly here. Cool, cool. Thanks, everybody, for popping in. There's Ricky Compton. Cool. I got 58 of you in here, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, so if you've got questions for myself or for Dave, just, uh, well, tag me. Yeah, I'll, I'll do them right away. Okay, All right. A few, of them, a few of them off the wall. I can get the others here in a minute. But... Well, let's hmm. see what you got there. What to start with? <laughs> oh, I didn't even grab my first one. I did. It's crazy because my first one's got almost sixty thousand views. It's it's insane. Um, oh well, I'll just pick one. Whatever. Yeah, just grab one. Let's see. I'll grab. I'll grab the old SG here. I did an SG. Did this one here. Let me uh. Whoa, man, that's a nice top you did on that one. Thank you, thank you. Let hey, me, Chuck, let me get this, how are you? Let me switch this battery out. This light's going bad. Ain't no, ain't no studio equipped like Mr. Hack is over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um. So uh, we got a request. Uh, Metal uh, Soda wants you to show the Watermelon SG. That's what this is, brother. Oh, there you go. Now, now you can see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, a. It, uh, you did that, Todd? Yeah. That's well, beautiful, now, man. The, you know, I mean, it's already on there, right? I mean, it's just, you know, you had to stain it up and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, but I mean. Stuff, but yeah. Yeah, that looks great. Right. Yeah, I ended up having, uh, gosh, trying to figure out which way to turn this. Like this, this gold part here, that was all like. Right. Kind of taped off, and I painted that and did the. Did the back of it black, naturally. Stained the stained the neck, all that good stuff. Got it actually came with Grover tuners. That was pretty cool. Oh, it did. Okay. Yeah, got my. I was gonna ask you about there. the hardware. Yeah. Stanger, that's cool, man. Yeah, and six SS right there, six string Stanger. Yeah, it came what with gold hardware did you on throw this one. In there? Huh? What kind of pickups did you throw in that one? Uh, just whatever came with it. <laughs> I, I really don't know. Some people think they're Wilkinson's pickups. I don't know. It sounds really good, though, honestly. It so, was, got, a, I, got another go question for you, Dave. How much was the kit? This one here is, this was the second one. This, this is a Pango kit. This is actually from China. Oh, okay. And these ones, these ones run about, uh, it was it was over 200 like 229 I think it was. But, they, I mean, the quality... Uh, yeah. the wood it was just amazing is that a rosewood like, fingerboard on that uh you, no i think this is ebony Pretty ebony sure. yeah yeah this like i said these i'll show you another one here it came with a maple neck okay so that's with <laughs> the electronics and everything because that's what i was asking yeah. that's what i was asking about the pickups so even the, the pickups and all the wiring everything came with it everything came with it to build the kit Oh, all wow. you have to do is supply the paint and the finishing and all that stuff to it. Nice. But yeah, it came out really good. It did come out really nice. <clears throat> uh, let's see. This one here is another one that really came out good. They all came out good. That's the Flying V. This one really oh, yeah. Good. This one kind of like has like a color shift to it. It's weird. If you go under like fluorescent lighting and a regular lighting, this... It'll be like blue, and then you go right. to different lighting. It's it's purple. It's crazy. Oh, I don't cool. understand it. But, uh, yeah, this is the – I don't think – this one might have been Albatross, 
maybe. There's several different guitar building companies out there, but uh, this one here, this one just came with your run-of-the-mill type of uh, tuners on it. It looks this great, back, man. This is back in the day when I just took Walmart stickers, stuck them on there, the gold stickers, but hey, it worked. It, it works, yeah. Just, <laughs> just God. And I mean, yeah. I mean, are the guitars playable in the nations good yes. the nuts oh, yeah. good well, everything's good i mean you got to do the setup naturally you know with the yeah 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 but, all that stuff. You, but yeah you can work with it though right i mean it's they, they play great it's 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 crazy that is I, crazy I man I, i've had yeah. one guitar i think i had a lot of issues with the intonation stuff of it but other than that i mean they've all came out really well i can't complain at all so uh half face is saying if it's a wilkinson pickup he says it'll be printed on the bobbin. Oh, so I don't know bobbin, if you've noticed yeah. anything uh, on the bobbin, but that's... Uh... i be honest with you, I've never paid attention to that. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And I, I do have other pickups that I could put in these, but I've just never... Well, I've you, never really done it. You can say if you get the sound of them. Right. And uh, let me just say hello to a few more folks that just popped in. Hey, there's PJ and the Beard. Welcome. Okay, I thought I saw another new name. If if I've uh, if I've missed you, uh, folks, please tag me and, and then I'll see you right away. There's James Severin. How are you? All right, go ahead. Thrash, thrash Metal said uh, clear over the sticker. No, I didn't do that. I was going to, no, but I I did that on a my guitar, my very first one. Naturally, if you put clear on it, kind of gets up underneath the edges, kind of rolls it a little bit. Yeah. But I got got smarter on that one. Just kind of put it over top. So. Right. Well, I'm going to show you this one here is probably, I don't know. It was crazy. <laughs> it's the first time ever I tried crackle spray paint. I don't know if you ever done that before. No. It's from Montana cans or Mon Montana spray paint. And they have crackle. You just put a base coat mm -hmm. and you spray it over top and give it time. Oh, it's it. textured? Is it textured? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's kind I of like a texture. Talking about. Yeah. All right. So I'll go ahead and show you the front of this. Uh, and then we'll go to the backs but this here is this is the ml i call it the ml beast turned out really good yeah man that looks awesome now you ready for this look at that crackle on here <laughs> oh that's sick i guess can't get out of the reflections there but that is that turned sick out, it turned out insane now the headstock's even better look i taped this off got that nice and this this oh, is you got the Dean headstock on that one. Yeah, yeah. So this is another one of those uh, Pango kits. Really, really good. It's got the Grover tuners on this one as well. You know, your, get your tops are better than most that I've seen <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's, it's hard to maneuver this thing in front of a camera here. But, but yeah, that headstock just killed me. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Like If you, if you were to out. buy a guitar with that finish, you'd pay it. You know, pay an arm and a leg for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was just insane. I like how it broke up. Yeah, I mean, it got bigger here and then it tightened up on the edges and stuff. Yeah. It's insane. That is. Yeah, this, has got, this has got the maple fretboard on it and everything. Right, right. <laughs> it's a nice, nice guitar. Love this one. They are nice. I haven't seen a, a dud in the bunch. They all look awesome, man. But look at, look at the size of that where it's like, it looks like it's hell being crashed or crackled you know what i mean so <laughs> it fades in and fades out it's crazy yeah no it looks great the yeah. are you okay i gotta ask this i mean is this are you a painter by trade or, or is this just like no. you're just a hobbyist that just turned out amazing pretty much a hobbyist turned out amazing <laughs> oh wow i mean you know i took building trades and things like that and you know i mean i i can use a spray can and the ironic part is, I got a, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, an airbrush. Right. An airbrush kit a couple years ago. Never took it out of the box yet. <laughs> I, I really need to. I want to see what I can do with that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I just want to thank Metalhead Hippie. Thank you so much. Metalhead Hippie says, Six String Stanger, enjoyed your man footage with your son. Awesome memories for you both. Can you show Hack your mini Kiz guitars? Oh, the, yeah, the mini uh, guitars that you've been. Yeah. Ah, oh, man, I got those downstairs. I would have to run down and grab them. Uh, 
Oh, David Ennis, thank you so much. David Ennis is rock on. Appreciate it. And Fruitcake Tony is here. Actually, for people who don't know in the chat, I've been unboxing a bunch of like uh, miniature guitars. Yeah, um, I've been watching them. Yeah. Right. H Over. Have you seen? You seen the one Kiss guitar that I unboxed, right? I saw the Kiss one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got. I'm getting ready to put up another video. Actually, probably might be tomorrow. Um, it's actually two more. I got like the Gene Simmons axe bass axe? guitar, right? And then then the original Iceman. Yeah, you know, the one with the crackle on it. The like the mirror. The broken guitar. mirror. Yeah, but it's not actual broken mirror. It's just painted on there. But it really, they're amazing little guitars. They're awesome little collector's items. I got a whole slew of more. <laughs> Actually, got another right. dime bag Daryl one. I'm gonna be unboxing soon too. Oh, cool. So I, I gotta ask you. So you 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 say you made a what did you say about half a dozen kits at this point? Yeah, I got I got a couple more. I can show you if you want. It's up to you. So well, before I do that, I just want so yeah. like is are those? Do you have? Are those the guitars that you play, or do you add? Did you do you have any store bought stuff, or are you, you oh, just I got, play the ones you make? I got a lot of store bought stuff too. <laughs> oh, More okay. than I need, just like you say. I, I, there's I don't need this many guitars. All right, dare I ask you? I don't know if well, your sister's watching. You didn't say your wife was watching, but did you want to? <laughs> oh, she knows. I, there's like, oh God. So, counting all those, I think I. I counted up the total of 22 before. That's with my DIYs. Oh, man. Yeah. Right. So, and I, I got a lot of, I guess you could say I'm an Epiphone boy because I got a lot of Les Paul, Epif Epiphone Les Pauls. Mm -hmm. um, I got a couple, I got a Flying V Epiphone. That's the Corona Flying V. Remember those? Yeah, yeah. The, wood. Yeah, the, you, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. I got, I got, Geez, two or three Schecters, like the Sun Valley. Um, man, I got some PRSs. I got the one you got, exact same one. I have you got a PRS. the one with the uh, so it has the binding on it. Yeah, same one, maroon. Okay, all so, that. okay, because because I, I the only reason I'm mentioning that is the binding is the last year is the first time they put binding on it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I've only had it about a year, but yeah, yeah, they're only a year old. Yeah, I got the Mark Holcomb the six string prs on that one mm -hmm. um i actually i got a seven string prs too i jumped on that one because they had a demo at sweetwater wanted to get, start into a seven string and i couldn't pass up the price it was like 48 months financing or whatever it's like okay right yeah. right my sister said wendy wilson said he has a guitar addiction oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm guessing addiction. there's Everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing there's no acoustics in that 22. There's one. Oh. <laughs> the <laughs> token acoustic, major. eh? The dusty just, one that sits in the corner. <laughs> it's actually in a – yeah, pretty much. Uh, actually, my son's got it. He's been kind of noodling on it a little bit. Um, it's an Ibanez. It's not even a full size. It's an acoustic electric. And it's, I mean, oh, it sounds okay. great. It's all black. It's, it's pretty nice. So we got a question for you here. Uh, PJ and the Beard is asking, how is the Epi Flying V? It is nice. Um, it's it's not, I didn't buy it new. I got it down at my local guitar shop down here. I was looking for a Flying V. I've had the thing for, geez, probably 16 years now. I would oh. get it out, but literally I'd probably have to disassemble my whole room because I got, it, like, got all my cases. It. It's in the yeah. corner. Um, but I, I ended up getting that used. I, I got a good deal on it. It does mm -hmm. need, it, it needs a little bit of fret work on it. But I mean, overall, it's a really nice guitar with the case, hard shell case and everything. I paid 225 bucks for it. I was wow. like, okay, I got to buy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I think it's a couple of frets on the higher end, I think, that were flattened out. But mm -hmm. I just never really... You know, huh. don't anything about it yet <laughs> headstock headstock harem is asking what's an acoustic guitar <laughs> <laughs> exactly i don't get me wrong i like acoustic but and i've always wanted to be able to pick you know yeah it's just the same way with leads i'm not a lead guy i just i'm more rhythm right 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 so 22 okay so i'm back down to 10 i actually last i sold my i sold the guitar just last night oh did you well what yeah did you sell? I, uh, my Firebird has flown. <laughs> it's gone. Oh, has it? 
<laughs> yeah. It would have been a year, actually, it would have been a year this week that I got it. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I, I got really, really lucky because I got it used. And it was weird because I got it used, but when I picked it up, like the, the plastic was still on the pit guard. And oh, the, really? the case was mint. There was not a, I don't know how they call that used, but hey, I'm not going to argue. So right. because it was, they knocked, so it was $400 cheaper because of th them calling it used. So, I, I basically sold it because of that. I sold the guitar for what I paid for it a year ago. So I didn't lose a dime on that guitar, which yeah. is, I mean, apart from the taxes, like, I, you know, right. I've just paid. I, so I had a guitar for a year, just paying the tax for it. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. As long as you're buying the right type of guitar, you can get your money right back out of it. Well, I'll tell you something. I honestly thought, you know, cause firebirds aren't for everybody. And right. that, that one took, I'd say probably about three weeks before it went. The right. Telecaster. Oh well, yeah, I that sold with my Tele. That went in a week. Really? Because it, well, it's it's a common. It's like trying selling a Tele is like selling a Strat. You know, it's like the ones that everyone. Yeah, it's a common thing. We yeah, it's, it's everybody's gonna have a Strat. Everybody's gonna have a Tele or even a, like a Les Paul or something. Right. So yep. what? Uh, what? Uh, so <laughs> I mean, with your twenty-two. What are your your main axes? What are you, what are you picking up most of the time? Oh boy, it's it's, it's <coughs> ironic. It's a, it's actually my first baby that I ever bought as a serious guitar. Mm -hmm. It's my Epiphone Les Paul. I could probably get that one out. It's it's from 1998, and it's just it just looks like a Jimmy Page guitar. You know, it's just got the the burst on it, brown or whatever, but it's it just plays so comfortably. Right. You know what I mean? When you get that one guitar and you just you just feel at home everywhere. You're just like, wow. You mean like these? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Mean, you just certain, pick them up. Right. That's probably my number one go to. If I'm just gonna play, just to come in and play for a half hour or whatever, I just I grab that one. I don't know if it's because it's first in line. <laughs> But well, it it's first in line for a reason because that's the one that's right. your go-to, right? Right. I mean, yeah. I, I do have the uh, Les Paul Prophecy, the blue one. The it's got the EMG pickups in it. That's probably my second favorite. Okay. Um, and then of course I do have the Zach Wild Bullseye Epiphone. Oh yeah. About that. About that one. That those first came out back in. Oh my God, two thousand two. That's got Something EMGs like that. too, right? Yeah, they're, actually, they're actually EMG HZ pickups. Okay. The, uh, non active. Um, oh. Actually, I put active in it after I bought it. Right. And for, for some reason, I don't know why. And I, I have other guitars. I have, an L, I have an ESP guitar that has EMG 8185s in it, just like the Zach Wild set. Mm. Sounds great in there. Even in my the uh, Prophecy, sounds great in there. For some reason, and that and that bullseye did not sound good at all. It was that's just, weird. Yeah, it was not like there was no when they like low end punch to it. It was just like it sounded okay, but it was just missing something, you know? Right, right, right. But uh, I ended up putting the original HZs back in it, and uh, and just to come to find out, <clears throat> my I think it was my bridge pickup that I bought, I bought the guitar brand new, but come to find out it was years later. That's why I went ahead and got the Zach Wild set because I was thinking, man, this just don't sound right. You know, I was, I was mm -hmm. upset. That's why I bought the Zach Wild set and then found out that was screwed up. So I took it to my shop that I take it to back then. And he's like, he was testing everything. He goes, Hey, do you realize you're the bridge pickup on the, uh, the HZ is not putting out like the total amount that it should, you know, as far as the right, right. or whatever it is. I was like, no, I didn't know that. And he goes, he goes, oh yeah, but believe it or not, he was super awesome dude. He's like, well, I can replace that for you. I'm like, I was like, oh well, how much did that cost? He goes, oh nope, it won't cost you anything. He goes, I got a few extras laying around. I'll just throw it in there. I'm like, sweet, okay. <laughs> yeah. But I got that back, man, and it's never sounded better. It's it sounds really good. Uh, <clears throat> Olympus has a question for you. He says, ask Dave to sell. Okay, ask Dave to sell me his Alpine White Epi Custom. Yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad when you when you get to that point where you're like, uh oh. You got so many. 
you forget what you even have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that is a nice one too. Very well, nice I got to ask you this. You, you mentioned you're an Epiphone guy and I mean, I know you were at NAM. I, I, I was checking out mm. some of your videos and by the way, I, I really dug your NAM videos because thank you. You know, and I'll, I'll tell you why, because you were, you could tell you were thrilled to be there. Oh yeah. And you were just like meeting, you know, you met Rob, you met, you know, Bia, like, you know, you were, you were, it's almost you like, tell you, know, us, you can tell, see the dumbness on my face. What do I say? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was cool. Right. Because it's, right. it's, it's real, you know, like you weren't there to, to, to advertise or promote or any of that. You were just there to enjoy it. Right. You know, right. Yeah. That's that's what I what I enjoyed about. But I was gonna we'll get in we'll get into into that a little bit. But what I wanted to ask you was, I mean, being there and you being an Epi guy, what do you think of all this stuff that they're all the new Epi uh, guitars that are coming out now? Did you Honestly, check them out? Yeah, I, I mean, I I didn't pick any up per se, but I mean, right. I definitely walked by. I mean, seen the video. I walked by in there and I was we hung out in there for a little while. And they, I'll be honest, even from like two three years ago even probably a little longer than that and i'm i don't know if i'm gonna get much hate in the comments or not but and i know there's a difference between you know gibson and epiphone per se as far as maybe wood quality things like that mm -hmm. but as far as build quality i'm i'm gonna almost throw it out there saying that epiphone is neck and neck with gibson as far as that goes because i i've picked up some gibsons in you know some shops around here or wherever and they're they're good but it's just like i mean there's certain ones like an sg i picked up an sg one time i was blown away and the sound was just like so unique but mm -hmm. i'm just talking about overall build it's just like they're they're so spot on and so good anymore and did you see the way the they changed their headstocks and stuff yeah, like they get like the yeah. open book thing mm -hmm. they're kind of they're really stepping up our game um uh, yeah i i uh their sgs and stuff their line of sgs is coming out it's pretty awesome too really nice yeah well they got a lot of a lot of color choices too now right yeah right you know, yeah with all the models i mean not just yes like mm -hmm. all of them you know yeah and uh like i was looking at i mean i'm always <laughs> jonesing for something but i was looking at the uh like the t the tv yellow uh les paul um les paul special with a with mm. a, just a, the single p90 on it yeah and so they've got it the, they're coming out the epiphone ones are coming out and they're in canada right they're coming out and they're like i think 560 dollars or something like that right the equivalent less that. ball is 1200 bucks crazy you know what i mean so yeah so i i i, I want i want to ab these things and see like right. is this really worth 700 dollars more than that because you could say a lot of time like it's it's you know because of the you know again i'm probably going to piss off a few people but the bulk of the sound is the pickups right exactly so, so if they you know as far as i know those two guitars have a p90 in them right mm -hmm. and if it's they have the same p90 then what, then they're going to kind of sound the same you know they, and then it's just a matter of how it feels yeah there's feel and i mean um we, we could go on for days as far as that goes you know, you got density of the wood, you know, I mean, everything's going to make a difference because, you know, it, just the way the pickup resonates with a guitar, it just can affect the, the sound of it so much. I mean, then you get into the strings, you know, what type of strings you like, you know, it, it, who knows what it's uh, strung up with. And the neck, I, I think the necks are the biggest thing that I noticed, like from Gibson to Epiphone, because the, the necks, at least on the SGs, because I've played a few SGs and Gibsons before, and the necks are so fat, man. And I, I didn't think I would like that fat of a neck, but it just it did feel very good, felt comfortable. Mm hmm. But uh, oh, uh, sorry, uh, Mitch Heyman is here. Welcome, Mitch. Hank Hill, welcome. What's up, Hank? Yeah, if there's uh, if uh, you just popped in, please tag me so I can say hello. We got 65 people in here right now. Thank I you so much. Into the chat. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I, I'm keeping an eye on the chat and keeping an eye on the on the discussion here. Okay. Uh, Tom Harha, I have to disagree. Wood is a major factor when playing with passive pickups and lower gain and clean. In my 
humble opinion, high gain in the wood doesn't seem to matter that much. That uh, well, yeah. I mean, you may okay. get a little more muddier tone sometimes, and maybe. Dave, Dave's guitar channel hack. Would you please tell him the wood doesn't matter? Explain to him the physics. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into the whole tone debate. Right. I have it's, a background in electronics, and I I. You know, so it's it's not even it's not even complicated the whole science behind how the. Right. But at the end of the day, you got a string vibrating a magnetic field that's inducing a voltage that's going to your amp. So it's it's the string motion, it's how much right. the pickups pick and the length of the string and how much it vibrates. So how you the actually the pick and the string gauge have a lot to do with the vibration yeah. of the string. So that would be a factor. But well, I'm not going to get into the whole tone well, thing. I, I presume <laughs> a lot of us are guitar players here, and that's part of the problem you you see something you pick it up and your head starts going oh my god this sounds totally different whoa oh my god you know it, your head starts messing with you yeah you know, yeah well as far does. as the neck as far as the neck it's really it's what's That's comfortable in your hand right, right? what's comfortable mm -hmm. in your hand you know and yep. then the fret work and you know is it comfortable to play overall, right? And right. That, that's where the the quality of, of you know, comes into play, you know, uh, whether you're and, – and, and you should. I mean, you should feel a difference between – in that in those regards, between like a, you know, a $1,200 guitar, like I was saying, and a, and a $500 guitar. You should oh, that, feel yeah. it immediately. And then the, the quality of the pickups too. Like you mentioned, right. you have the SC, like the same SC that I have. Yeah. I mean the feel and playability that is great, and I, I like I was I went I was with my brother who's a, also a guitar player, and um, when I picked up that guitar and I played, I'm like I can't believe how good this thing feels because it's Indonesian made, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we grabbed some four five thousand dollar PRSs, and this mine felt better. But here's the difference: when you plug it into an amp, the pickups that I had in mind were lacking. So right. I got, cause I, they got a, you know, they're, they're 8515, but they're the Korean ones. And I, and I, I gigged with that guitar twice and, and cause I really know the material well, and I'm kind of, I'm expecting there's certain things and they're not there, mm -hmm. but that's okay. I got the, the rest of it is great. So it's just a matter of you put in a good set of pickups, everything else right. is great. And now you've just taken that guitar and you just, you know, elevated it. I can't wait to get those Korean pickups in there, but. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all it's right. So, all it's a matter of opinion for everybody. You know, oh, age, but. it's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's endless. It's endless. Oh, Hobo Rody is here. Welcome. Um, yes. Let's, uh, let's talk about NAM. So, uh, is this the first time you've been to NAM? Yes. Very first time. I, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I actually got invited out by a pedal company. <clears throat> I did a review for it. X oh, gear pedals. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, he sent us sent us some badges out and uh had a real good time. I just I was so glad I went. I when I told my son about it, because he had been out to California a couple of times. He was out there for uh was it VidCon or something, you know, big YouTubers convention. Mm hmm and so he kinda, you know, didn't really know his way around, but he'd been to the convention center a few times and once I told him I said, Hey, so Got a couple passes to go to Nam. He said, "Okay." I'm like, "What?" I guess we're going. <laughs> you know, he's just he just turned 20 actually last week. Oh, cool. So yeah, but uh, yeah, we had a great time. I wouldn't change that experience for the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you went, and you went. I mean, like I went to the the, the small one in Nashville, and that already was kind of yeah. So the, I, can I can imagine how big you, it was. It, crazy, overwhelming, right? Oh my God. Yeah, we was there. We flew out Thursday morning, and we, after we got our badge and everything, we walked in at like one o'clock. So I mean, first day was pretty well shot. So we just kind of walked around. That's I think the first day was when we ran into Rob and we seen Rabia, but he got away from us. And I was like, "Dag on it!" But we were so tired, we just walked around, just kind of scooping out the place. We didn't even hit any, hardly anything that day. <laughs> so yeah, insane. I saw the video with Rob. He seen. Seemed like a pretty decent dude. I mean, for you, yeah. for, you know, you go walking up to him cold like that. Seems all yeah, right. I do, I do have, I do have a Chapman too. I got the Ghost Fret. That thing is awesome. Yeah, is yeah, awesome. I, yeah. I, I, I you, you just have the one Chapman guitar. Yeah, just the Ghost Fret. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I, I would not. 
I, I, you know, not to raise up anything, but whatever's going on with Rob's going on with Rob. That has nothing to do with the guitar quality or anything what he's doing. They're an awesome built guitar, plain and simple. Done. <laughs> yeah, That's amazing. I got my hands on one uh, in uh, when I was down in Arizona. I played a, a Ghost Fret and a few of <coughs> a few other ones, and uh, yeah, you know. It's weird though that they were uh, they were there was a dealer here in, in my city, and um, I don't know what the hell it was, but everyone that every Chapman that I saw there on the floor was defective. Really? Yeah, they were all defective. They were like you know, uh, one time I went to play when it was the selector switch was I don't know, it was just kind of loose in there. wasn't you know <laughs> I don't know. Well, now there wasn't there a time. I can't remember. I know there were some of them that was made in Indonesia and some of them was made uh, in Korea, I think. So maybe that right. was part of the switch. I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, so what happened I was, I again, got, sorry, I, go ahead. I, I said, I think the one I got was made in Indonesia, I believe. Yeah, I sure. think what happened is they got a run of bad ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they, uh, they just did a blowout sale and they just got rid of all the Chapmans. And they're no longer a Chapman dealer, right? Mm -hmm. So, but then, so I, I, I'm, like, I'm, honestly, I, I didn't have a really high opinion of Chapman. I had not played a good one yet mm -hmm. until I was in Arizona. And then I played that Ghost Friend. I'm like, it's pretty good, right? And then I, I mm -hmm. played, what was it, an ML1, I think he had there as well. And that was all yeah, right, nice. too. You know, so there are good ones out there. Maybe those were like, you know, um, like you were saying, maybe in a switch over or whatever. I don't know. Right. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, there's always going to be uh, duds with with uh, you know with any any guitar manufacturer, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, David yeah. Ozab is here. Welcome, man. Cool. Yeah, I think cool. the one that I got was that was the second run of the Ghost Fret that they did. Right. And it was uh, those those were the ones that was like you get the you got the best of both worlds in that guitar. Cause you got like the the you know the hip shot tuners hip shot bridge all the the locking tuners everything right. was everything was good he said in the video back then there wasn't anything else they could do to make that guitar any more better than it is and for the lowest price that it was and i i think back then i only paid well only <laughs> it was like 700 bucks back then but i got the big case with it and and all mm -hmm. that and uh but nowadays they got the you know they got the low end and then they got your better versions so right, it's just, right yeah i just it's just basically from what i'm seeing it's you know you get a little bit um less quality on your you know your bridge and your tuners they kind of cut cost on that type of stuff you know yeah pickups and, too usually yeah and your of course your finishes you know your higher end is going to have a lot better stuff on it but um yeah i'm just glad i got the one i did because They'll, they'll never make it like that again. <laughs> okay, we got a question here. Oh, Glenn is here. Hey, Guitar Bazaar. How are you, man? Uh, original Paramutant is here. Welcome. Dennis uh, uh, Brio is here. Dennis says, since your guest likes Epiphone, has he ever tried the Snow Falcon? Also, hmm. uh, what does he think of the Tommy Thayer Electric Blue, Les Paul? I don't know if I've seen that one. He just uh, brought it out, actually, uh, at NAM. Really? It's a real sparkly blue. Okay, yeah. Epiphone. Yeah, the, it's a Les Paul. It has, like, glitter. Yeah, okay. Glitter all over it. The, yeah, but I think I was, I think I actually got footage of that in one of my videos. Because some, yeah. I was far away and I zoomed in, somebody picked it up. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. I couldn't even get close to it. But, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful in person. My God. Yeah. If that's the one that he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, oh, Hutch from BA is here. Welcome. What about the uh, the Snow Falcon? Familiar with I, that uh, one? Yeah, I'm familiar with it. I've never played it, though. Oh, I never played it. Okay. The, the shop that I have around here, I don't even really go to much anyway, but um, yeah, they don't they don't really have a bunch of newer stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah, the Tommy Thier one. I uh, appreciate No, original Paramutant. You rock, buddy. <laughs> um. Yeah, the Tommy Thayer one, it's got, like, it's all sparkled, and then it's got the, the, the pickup. Uh, the un mm -hmm. He's got an uncovered and a covered, and the uncovered one has got the blue bobbins in it. Huh. 
you know. Hang up. Yeah. I want to go back and look at my video now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That so, almost have to be it. So you met you met Rob and uh, mm -hmm. and you also met uh, B as well. When was that? Like the next day? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. It was the second day. Yeah, I was stupid. <laughs> of all the questions. How long you been playing guitar? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> what an what an idiot. <laughs> oh no, I mean it's you know you know. You know, yeah, what else was I going to say? You know, it's like, God, you think yeah. of all these things before you see somebody, and it's like, oh, my God, he's there. Uh-oh, what was I going to say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stupid. He was cool. He was a super cool dude. Yeah. Everybody I met was super cool. I mean, Rob, I seen, I did run into uh, Ryan Bruce, Fluff. I ran into him. I got a picture with him, but mm -hmm. he was in, he had a coffee in his hand. He was on the run, so I was like, okay, whatever. I was going to try to talk to him. I did see Jared Dines. I got to talk to him. He's He's cool as hell. Right. Talked to him for a few minutes after uh, we got done filming. Um, man, who else? Oh, Ola England. Man, uh, you want to try some guitars. Solar guitars are the K-Rap. They were awesome. Really, oh eh? God. Oh, my God. Never I, tried one, man. I played the uh, single cut, the red Solar single cut. Oh, my yeah. God. I picked that up. It had to weigh every bit of fourteen pounds. That's a bit, it, it. That was heavy. I mean, yeah, that is heavy. Ugh. And uh, and of course they had everything set up at the Fortin amplification booth. I'm blown away at Fortin amps as well. I'll never be able to buy one, but you know, yeah, they sound yeah. so aggressive, so just like tear your face off tone. You just that's crazy. But uh, it, was he was he there demoing? Like, was he doing a clinic, or was he, he just? He did, but we missed that part. We actually ran into him and followed him in because we was trying to find him, and he we knew he was going to be at the Fortin booth at some point because that's where all the Solars were. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we found him. We followed him in. He stopped somewhere, and then I was like a little giddy schoolgirl. Hey, yeah, can I get your picture? <laughs> so I pull up, and he's like, "Yeah, real quick, real quick." And I said, oh, you're probably busy tasting shit, you know, like he does on his channel. He's like, oh, yeah, I've been doing that everywhere, you know. And so and then he kind of wandered off. I'm like, ah, well, that was fun. So it was like an hour later. We go, well, not maybe 45 minutes or so. It was just right around the corner. It was a Fortin booth, and we hung out there. I thought, oh, my God, he's going to, you know, he's going to go over there and play. Right. And we was right in front. And we was waiting forever. Well, we should have just waited completely because... He came over, his wife Louise, she's very beautiful in person, just short little thing. Um, they was over there just meeting and talking to everybody, shooting the shit, just whatever. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was like, wow, why didn't they just wait? People were going up interviewing, I'm like, <laughs> such an idiot. I felt like Chris Farley, you know, back when he did those <laughs> interviews, like, I'm so stupid. But, uh, but if you've seen that video, it was cool because Zach actually got to talk to him. And uh, had him fist bump his beard because Zach was Zach, my son Boulder. He he was trying to get everybody that he met to touch his beard, right? That's something to do because he's got this long beard. If you ever seen him, and uh, so he took, he asked Ola that, and he's like, "No." And he goes, "What do you mean no?" And he goes, "I don't want to get sick." He get, and I was like, "Oh, I'd fist bump the beard." So he, he just went, "Boom!" <laughs> <laughs> it was it was funny. He's a cool dude. And I was talking to him for about a minute or two afterwards. I wish I told Zach, I said, why don't you just keep the camera rolling? That'd been awesome footage, but okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, hindsight was 2020, right? Tom Harhai is asking, uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if you know, he's asking if Fortin has uh, a synergy module. I do not know. They had the amps that they had out were the, what is it called? A sigil or sigil or something. It's just the smaller amp. And then they had the evil pumpkin this things huge right massive oh my god i couldn't even imagine how much that weighs they were just killer i played through the sigil one and it was just i couldn't i got in trouble they have that the tome police i don't know if they had that in summer name or whatever they'll come around or the oh, volume yeah. police yeah they ran over turned down the volume get out of that loud I'm like, sorry <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were definitely awesome amps my god they're beautiful great sounding all right cool so you met so you met you met uh you met some uh some cool people there that's awesome man what any YouTubers, gear that pardon youtubers and then uh of course you know you've seen the 
Alex from Orange. <laughs> I love that interview. If you've seen that or if you haven't seen it, I think it was the second second or third day. That was just he's a funny dude. He's you would have to watch the video. I ain't gonna run it for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Anything else uh like any gear that you saw that really stood out? You mentioned the solar guitars were really cool. You mentioned the Fortin. Um I mean orange has got that terror stamp pedal it's actually a uh i think it's the micro terror actually in a box in a box okay yeah, in a stomp box oh you cool can, you can just take that and just plug it right into a cabinet right and it it sounded amazing i mean mm. i i don't even know what to say about it this is awesome uh so is it 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 can power a cab it's it yeah. is it like a mini it's, head yeah is it's it got like a tube watts. in it? it? Yeah, it's got a tube in it. Oh it's, wow! It, it's actually it just looks like a foot pedal, and it's got a it's got your gain, your volume, and and a tone knob on it. Sweet. And it's got, I think it's A and B or something, because one's like low gain and one's high gain or something. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That is very on, cool. I think it's I think it's like a couple hundred bucks. I think is what it was. It's not Should. too bad. Just take that out to a. I mean, there's a lot of companies that are making these really tiny heads, but to put it right in the pedal, that's pretty cool. Right. Yeah, it was pretty unique, I thought. You don't see that very much at all. <laughs> yeah, Not yeah. I know. Yeah. Any, what, what about guitar-wise? you see any other – did you try – got to ask you if you tried a Kiesel because the Kiesels for me are what really blew me away. The Kiesels and the know. Primus. Pardon? Yeah, I, I, I didn't try any of the Kiesels. I was just – be honest with you, there's a lot of people there that day when we got over there and mm. they were just hanging up and I just, I didn't want to take my chances. <laughs> they're, they're, they're a beautiful guitar though. My God. Yeah. They had some really awesome looking ones. That's for sure. What was cool um, about them is they look good, but they also f played and they felt really, really yeah. nice. You know what yeah, I mean? I should have picked, I should have picked one up and tried it out, but I didn't even mess with it. Framus. I, I can't remember. I, I know we was there. I picked up one of those, I believe. Just kind of didn't have it plugged into anything. I was just feeling around. And mm -hmm. it felt pretty nice, though. I never played yeah. Framus before. No, I thought the <clears throat> I thought the Framus, uh, Framus looked pretty good. Right. Oh, thank you so much, Hank Hill. Appreciate that comment. Uh, Krellbar. I don't know if I said hello to you, Krellbar, but hey, Krellbar. I don't know if I caught you earlier. If I haven't, uh, if I haven't said hello, please tag me in the chat. And if you've got questions for, for Dave or myself, uh, please tag us so I can catch uh, catch the questions. Thanks, Hippie. Yeah, thumbs up, folks. And if you're new to the channel, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Appreciate that. And uh, if you'd like to sub to Dave's channel, I have a link below. I also have a link in the cards. Yeah. Hey, Crowbar showed up late. <laughs> no worries, man. As long as you made it. And there's Bobby Clipper. Kiesel guitars are artwork, yeah. But they're Absolutely. playable. They're playable yeah. artwork, right? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. yeah. They're not have just... you ever have you ever played a uh, fan fret guitar? You know, where the frets are just kind of Yeah, yeah, where they're like uh, Yeah, fanned out. I've never played one. I don't know I've if seen I have. Them. I don't know I've... why I never picked one up, but uh, they're just very different. They're weird. Makes, yeah. Yeah. I I, I, to play. I'm trying to remember if I pick one up. I've never seen one in a music store around here. So if I pick right. one up, it would have been at Summer NAM. And I can't recall if I have or not. I don't know. Yeah. If I ever get to go to a NAM again, I'm definitely going to feel out a little more. That was just my first experience. And I was just. That's I overwhelming, it. man. It is. And I, I wanted to get to the companies that like helped out my channel because I've done giveaways and stuff. Or people donated, you know, like Hose Attack and all them guys. I made sure I wanted to talk to them, you know. Mm -hmm. So, like most of the people I talked to, like Rattlesnake Cables, uh, my gosh, I can't remember half the people now. <laughs> but those people were the ones that helped out the channel, and I just want to make sure I went over and talked to them. And, you know, if I couldn't get an interview with them, get a picture or something, just tell them thank you. Right, like right. It was more just kind of like a feel out, see what was there. There's so much to do. So, at the end of every day, it's like I was ready to chop my legs off. <laughs> they they hurt so bad. Oh yeah. Oh, my God. 
Well, I, I, that's what I was saying to you. Like, I mean, I went to the this I, the first ever NAM I went to was Summer NAM, and already that was overwhelming. Like, yeah. so I can only imagine the first. You know, like you're jumping in the deep end right off the bat going to that yeah. one. Well, it was like the second day we're walking around. I'm like, well, yeah, I guess we've pretty much hit everything. Let's go back around. He pulls out. Zach pulls out the mat. He's like, we haven't even been in the upstairs, the metal part, yeah. or the basement of this one. And there's a whole other building over here. And then I'm like, oh, well, God. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Yeah, you just got to pick your favorites, man. Uh, exactly. Lost La, La Smoke has a comment here. Guitar Hack, have either of you heard the soundboard recording of the Almond Brothers when Zach was a last-minute substitute guitarist? No. He played from heard. memory as a fan. Easy to find from web. Hmm. Uh, web Almond Brothers fans. No. But that sounds wow. really cool, man. Yeah. Um, I did follow him back when he had his band Pride and Glory. That was oh, I remember good that. Stuff. Yeah, that was, that was your good Southern... Southern uh, rock, yeah. Yeah, that was good stuff there. But no, hey. I didn't even know he played that. Uh, Great Vanzini is here. Welcome. Welcome. All right, so we're, we're... Oh, yeah, we're already past the hour. So I usually make this speech at at some point in the proceeding so i want to thank everybody for uh for checking out the show um yeah folks uh again we got an amazing community here let's keep it positive let uh, let's all keep supporting each other um yeah, and post some content so we can all you know more people post content the more you know we can share our uh, musical journey so to speak you know right. it's all it's it's all good man it, it's all good i want to thank uh uh, thank any everybody here for subbing uh, subbing my channel, and uh, again, uh, if you're not subbed to uh, to Dave, please do. Again, I have the link below. I have the link in the cards. It's gonna be a great year. Started out great going to Nam. I got a lot of stuff coming this year. So <laughs> yeah, a lot of smoke is saying it's awesome if you find it and it's free. You you you're a Zach guy. You you should check that out. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. All right. <clears throat> Okay. All right. So, um, is there any uh, anything that you wanted to? Okay. Uh, Bobby Lopez subbed you, so you just you picked up a sub. So that's oh, well, that's awesome, you. Bobby. Cool man. <laughs> Appreciate hey, it. Meryl, thank Jay. you. Appreciate it. So, is there any uh, anything you want the folks to know? Stuff you got uh, coming up? Um, I I'm gonna have some demos coming up. I I did talk to the guys at uh, Singular Sound. Uh, I don't know if you've seen my video of the cable system where you wrap up the cables. You didn't see any of that? Oh, no. Pretty cool. Well, I got a video up of that. They sent those out to the channel to for me to review, and I ran into them at NAMM, mm -hmm. and uh, they kind of gave me a deal on their uh, Eros looper, the studio looper thing they have. Right. So I'm going to get messing around with that. I had their beat buddy from years ago. I'm going to try to redo a video since i got better stuff to do it now. Mm -hmm. So, got a lot of cool different things coming up. Um, when the weather breaks here, hopefully in a couple months, I'll start up DIYs. Let me show you one last DIY. Yeah, quick, go, if for you don't mind. go for it. Okay. One last, one more for the road. Hey, visual guy, welcome, man. Uh. All right, so. I don't know if anybody knows or if anybody's in here that watches Brad Angove or not. He's uh, awesome. He does DIY kits. He's a one heck of an airbrush artist and stuff. Um, I've watched his channel quite a bit, and I came up with the idea that he did, but I kind of took it a step further and did my own thing with it. He used, let's see, you put your base color down, and then you put uh, dish soap. Just put dish soap all over it. Right, and then you you put uh, color over top of it, and then you let that dry for I don't know maybe ten minutes, and you wipe the soap off, and then you're left with something like this. Holy shit! Yeah, it's pretty cool. That is very cool, man. Yeah, because what he did, he had a solid color under underneath, right? And then he and they wiped it off. Well, I I went ahead and got neon colors. I did yellow, orange, green hot pink and then you know put the soap on it and sprayed it white wiped it off and that's what it ended up with 
That looks it's amazing, amazing, man. Yeah, headstock and all. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> and did the back plate on the there. Back plate. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. That is yeah, very like this awesome. Type. This one actually sounds good, and I know these are Wilkinsons. Um, because I, I think Brad Angu told me that because he's he's with uh, this is solo guitars. Is who who this is? Right. And but uh, but yeah, he he said they use Wilkinson pickups in theirs. But this it sounds really good too. Wow, yeah, this, it this looks great. Views. Yeah, thank you. I had to show that one. So <laughs> yeah, I know. I I'm glad we waited for that one. Yeah. All right. Very, cool. very very cool. Okay, Metal Soda said uh, to tell you that you rock. Thank you. You do too, buddy. Everybody rocks. It's Everybody time. rocks, man. Jeff Miller. Because it's all about the music. It's guys. all about the music. All right, <laughs> folks. Thanks for watching uh, the channel. Thanks for subbing. Thanks for the support. Uh, folks, if you don't follow me on Facebook, the link is below. Check out the Guitar Hack page. I've got a guitar hack group as well. Check that out. Also below, I've got Instagram. I'm posting posting stuff there every day. There's a thing going around now, like 10, 10 photos from different live gigs. So I think I'm up to like day two or three now. So check that out there as well. Um, yeah, really appreciate your support. You guys absolutely rock. Uh, might be doing something on the weekend. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. But if not, you know, Thursday night, 8 o'clock. I'm always going to have the hack show. All right, folks, Thanks. have a great night, and we will catch you soon. All right. Rock on, Take everybody. everybody. Take care. Yeah.